welcome to the MWTCA National Tool Meet. And yes, all those tables behind me are covered with hand tools for sale. So this is gonna be a fun day. Um, for those of you who don't know, the National Meet happens twice a year, MWTCA. Um, and well, normally, not last year for some reason, um, but it happens in June and then in September, October. The next one will be in Kentucky. Um, and this one is actually in Madison, Wisconsin. Uh, so this is the largest hand tool sale in the world by far. Uh, a lot of fun. But there are local meets that happen all around the U.S. and the world. If you want to find out more about the MWTCA, uh, you can go to mwtca.org, link below. Or if you want to find out about other collecting organizations around your location in the world, um, other meets like that, I have a map running it all out um, at the handtoolfinder.com um, and that link down below as well. So we are going today, um, going to be going through all of the, the tools for sale. And if you do have any questions or something you want to see or uh, would like to see a price on something, uh, let me know. Um, here the prices can vary a bit and there's a sticker on everything, but every price is negotiable. Um, especially today, Saturday, because uh, this is only going to be open for a couple more hours. Um, and everyone is thinking about having to haul this all back to their car. And so they're willing to make a little bit of a deal today. Um, usually the selection has been picked through a little bit by today because on Thursday there is the tailgate sale which is the the best selection of user tools um, but um, Saturday uh, Friday is the best selection of the indoor tools which tend to be a little bit more collectible um, but then Saturday is the day where everyone has to load it all back into their car and so they're willing to make a few deals so if you have any comments throw those in there and uh, we will run through this flip this back around. Unfortunately, the flip around button is right by the camera. No, flip around. There we go. We're going to start and go down this table and then back and forth through all the tables until we get to the other side. So uh, let's start here. A couple miter box saws. This one is one of my favorites. Unfortunately, I've got three of these and the tops on these, this, this piece here is, is broken on all three of them. <laughs> I can't get those to save my life. Here is a really nice... Well, no. But who is the maker on that one? The Abbey... Chicago, Illinois. You guys can probably read that better than I can. Nice vice. What's he asking on that one? $125. So here we got a couple scorps. Draw knives that are bent. I was actually looking at these. I might come back and pick these up. They are handles for crosscut saws. Um, and often these cost more than the saws do. But uh, we'll come back and take a look at those. Lots of saw sets. Rules, measures, levels, wrenches of all kinds. Some marking gauges and spoke shaves. Bit uh, a set of auger bits. There was a really nice set of those that went yesterday for a steel. Then we have uh, molding planes of all kinds. Trammel points. Some more building planes. Nice chisel plane. These things are expensive. This is what, $4.50? All right, I remember that. Yeah. <coughs> and uh, chisels, more chisels, more chisels, more carving chisels. Hey, ain't that slick? And we've got books, rules, here's a bowl ad. I was looking at this one, it's kind of an interesting old one. And then here we've got a uh, Cooper's ads. Uh, we were trying to figure out what this was yesterday. One, we were saying, is it a blower, is it a grinder? No, it's actually a corn shucker. You put your, your uh, uh, ear of corn in here and you spin these around and it shreds off all of the kernels, which then come out of here. Very nice. How much were the slicks? Uh, let me come back here. 
Sticker price is 59, 29, 25, 18. And again, sticker price doesn't mean much. Everything is negotiable. No one wants to carry them back to their car. And uh, a few people have left already. Um, and some people haven't come down yet from uh, sleep. So if the table's covered, they're, they haven't come down yet. If it's empty, they have left. And Phil? Oh. Nice plot plane. Let's see what we got in here. And fours. A Union Compass plane, 70 bucks. That's a nice one. Whole bunch of spoke shaves. See, this is probably my second favorite spoke shave of all time. Just the standard 51. <laughs> Some swing arm 48s, whole bunch of block planes, lots of pretty block planes. One of these days, I want to get another one of these. I had one that was missing the side plate, and I sold it. Uh, 110 bucks. That's actually not bad for that one. Bedrock. Okay, here's a 605 and a half. So a bedrock five and a half. That ain't cheap. That those those are hard to find. Draw a knife, bunch of joiner planes, $90, $100, $70, $110. $10. Hollow alder, 10 cutter. There's a 71 in the box. Ooh, really? Under 90 bucks. But it's it's all there in the box. There haven't been a whole lot of 71s today. Thursday outside, there were a bunch of them. Some cabinet scrapers and Mini router planes. Mm. I've yet to find a mini router plane that I like. Now, this is a fun one. This is a core box plane. This will cut out a concave cativity because the cutter is just there on the tip, and so it just cuts off that little tip. It's kind of an interesting plane. One of these days, I'd like to show it off. But they're very um, expensive. So. I don't know, but you know, they're, they're not as easy to come by. So. I bought a 45 yesterday, uh, 45 and the cutters. It was like uh, 20 some cutters that came with it. And I paid 41 bucks at the auction. So a whole pile of carving chisels, knives, some books. Let's come around this side. If I missed a, a comment or anyone wants to see something, uh, let me know. Uh, what was the price on the Alma wooden plane. Let me go back and take a look. I don't remember seeing that one. Oh, there it is. Here, here, let me take a look. Who's he asking about? Oops. Camera down, sorry. Tooth plane. That's the good part. Yeah. Toothing plane. Toothing plane. Engine. I haven't seen toothing planes that often. That's nice. Oh, the live on here. No, you're fine. You're fine. There you go. Let me see if I missed another question. Wow, 41. Yeah, it was a very good deal. Um, 45s. You can usually find a 45 with one cutter uh, for around 45 bucks. That's about the going rate. Maybe 60, 70 if it's in really good condition. Um, uh, and then you get one with all the cutters, and you're usually looking at like a hundred and something. Uh, like this one. This one is in really nice condition. Um, whole series of cutters that come with it. And what does he have on that? 165. I wouldn't be surprised if he would sell that one for 120. That's about the going rate for one in that condition. Uh, well, with the uh, with the toothing plan. They are very hard to find. Let's see. I'll check this out. This is a grooving plane. But yeah, they are much, much cheaper in uh, in Europe because they don't sell them here. You have to buy them secondhand here. 176. Uh, 1976. 19, uh, 1768. Wow, I'm going to have a hard time reading that. <laughs> Some beautiful old planes. A couple other people haven't uh, woken up and come down yet. Let's see what we got over here. In Canada, we rarely find anything close to that. 
Um, well, you should, uh, you know, Canada is a good bit more expensive than the U.S., but not by that much. Um, you might want to look up the Canadian Tool Collecting Organization, um, especially uh, uh, in Ontario. They have, uh, well, they used to have a meet there. I don't know if they've had it in a while. So we've got some molding planes. Really nice molding planes. What are the planes with iron body parts and wooden soles? Oh, those are called transitional planes. Like here, this is a transitional plane. When Stanley started making the all metal planes, the people who had wooden body planes didn't like them. So they started selling the transitional. It has the best of both worlds with the mechanical function with the wooden sole. And once people started liking these, then they wanted a sole that wouldn't last, would last longer. And so they started going to the regular all metal planes. But yeah, transitional plane. Going off the show in Pickering. Haven't been to that one. It's a nice old toothing plane. Lots of molding planes. Marking gauges, molding planes, molding planes, marking gauges, hags tooth, plow planes. There aren't as many people today, but there usually are. Some really nice plow planes. Yesterday was a pain trying to get around everyone, trying to get video, because everyone wanted to see what came out on Saturday. Okay, is this a sewing machine? Yep, sewing machine. Sewing machine, that's kind of interesting. And this is a hand crank something or other. Oh, apple, key, apple core peeler slicer. A saw vise with the, uh, the ball top, breast drill. This is a punch. Um, so you've got all the uh, the letters on here, and this can then punch down and punch into there. Makes it a little bit easier for organizing. Kind of nifty. A little of this, a little of that. Is that a saw set? Uh, I believe that is a saw set. Yep. Oh, no, stapler. Stapler. Here are a couple more... Um, cross-cut saw handles. That is terribly depressing. Yeah, I'm live. You want to be on? I don't know. If you want me to be? Say hi. Hello. <laughs> it's fun running into other uh, uh, members of the uh, the hive mind. And it's a fun group out here. That draw knife has seen better days. <laughs> that has been resharpened a few times. Been drawn and quartered. <laughs> nice vice. All right, let's come around over here. We've got rules. <laughs> Man, this table rules. <laughs> D23. That was a whole box of saw handles that sold yesterday at auction. I think it was like seven bucks for the whole box. The auction was selling things dirt cheap last night. I bought a. Um, a, a um, a cobbler's knife, which I've been looking for for years. Chisels and screwdrivers. Yankee drivers. Let's see. Uh, levels. Cabinet scrapers. Oh, these are fun. These allow you to turn a 45 um, into a hollow and round. So you've got the hollow and round profiles that can fit on the 45. Those are incredibly expensive because they're hard to find, especially when you get a full set. So, interesting things in here. If anyone sees something they want me to stop and take a look at, let me know. And uh, for those of you who want to know, we are in Madison, Wisconsin. And this sale is going on until noon today. Um, it has been going on for the last few days. Some beautiful old axes. That thing is slick. That's a nice big slick. 150, 98, 70, 79. And again, today, all prices are negotiable. And uh, someone hasn't come back down from sleeping yet. Let's go down this table. This table looks pretty, especially when you get to the other side. You got all the 45s and 55s over there. So, uh, Job T plow auger bits. Yeah. 65 bucks for the set. 
miter box. What are slicks used for? They are timber framing chisels uh, for cleaning up large um, timber framing joints. This is a, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? A uh, uh, filister, moving filister, big one. We have the antique tools of the trade shows. It's the largest of its kind in Ontario. Yeah, I, I've heard about that one, but I've never been up to it. I would like to actually get up there sometime. Not this year, of course, but... <laughs> oh, this one. This one's cool. This one's hard to find. This is a corner brace with a uh, union and a union, so you can get flush up to a wall, but you can still crank this around to drive the bit. Do you need a slick to do timber framing project? You don't need it. You can do it with a big chisel, but a big slick makes things so much easier because uh, you can reach in farther and you can get out larger bits. whole lot of molding planes. What was the best deal you got? Um, probably the 45 with all the cutters. That was, um, that one, I was surprised at auction that one went that way. All right, 280, and let, yesterday I counted it, it was, uh, uh, oh, and he has, let's see here, 27 chisels. There's 280, so just over $10 a piece. Nice, good old carbon chisels. Here are some very hard to find axes. Let's see, 85, 275, 275, 80, 85, 70, 65. Braces, oh, this, this is a mortise hands. So you can use this to actually chop out morses and then shave them like a slick on this end. Kind of a nifty, nifty tool. Back where you saw the big slick, there was a box what looked like a compass in it. What was it? A compass? Let me go take a look. Um, yeah, let me take a look. There are all sorts of weird things. And one of the things I love about coming to these is learning, is you can walk up to a table and go, what is that? Uh, let's see, what is this? I'm assuming you're talking about this. And yeah, that's a compass. So you can see the uh, the compass needle in there. Everlasting management supplies was established in the Yeah, it's a compass. Now look, it points north. <laughs> There you go. I just missed a box of chisels, gouges, sold local, classified. Oh, $15. Oof, nice. All right, let's see what we got over here. There's some older tools. Beautiful old bit and braces. These are fun with the, uh, the large square uh, bit holders that you can exchange in another. Some really cool early ones. Howdy. Good morning. It is indeed. Really, some really metal braces. Yeah, I love seeing the way the blacksmiths figured out how to make a rotating head. And there's a bunch of different ways that they that they connected these. Very very interesting. Corner chisel. Oh, there's some beautiful braces. Lamps, braces. Wow, I should have braced myself for this table. There's a lot on there. Another covered table. Really cool machi machinist chest. <clears throat> uh, let's see what we got here. Here is a Stanley 45. Um, 160, but it comes complete with boxes and irons. 165. That's that's about the going price, but it wouldn't surprise me if he'd come down a bit on that. 147, push me, pull you. This is a tongue and groove plane. So the one side will do the tongue, one side will do the groove. Just depends on which direction you push it. It's kind of a fun one. And then these, this is a 48, and the arms actually swing. So if the arm's on one side, it does tongue. You flip it around, it does grooves on the other side. Here is a beautiful five and a half in the box. 
It's a uh, Stanley 50. Ooh, I'm going to have to come back and look at this. What is he asking on? It is marked out. Does he have any cutters? He just has the one cutter. Uh, it comes in the box, so it's probably a bit on my price range. I want to get a 50 one of these days, but I want to get one that's not in a box. Some replacement fences. Scraper planes. Low angle. Here is a three. Oh, no, it's too late for him. Got a uh, friend. I'm keeping an eye out for a three. I'm probably going to come back a little later. Ooh, here's a fun one. This is a, uh, you know, a dowel maker. So you create square stock and it goes through here. Rotate the handle, and this is hollow all the way through. So you can switch out different cutters on them. But often the cutters cost as much as the, the whole head. So here we got... Uh, 607. Ooh, Bedrock 607. Nice. Those are expensive. Will you go back over each table after ending the live stream? Um, no, I don't have the, the time today to do that. Um, if there's something particular you want, uh, um, some people let me know ahead of time and I can keep an eye out for it, but uh, um, I don't have the, the time to, and I, I don't have the money to buy things um, for other people right now. I don't have cash on hand. Sorry. Free rulers. Another machinist. Corner chisels. Nice slick. Here's some chisel sets. $60, $60, $60. That's actually a really good deal for those. Old Bucks Brothers. Those are hard to come by. Oh, for myself, no. I, there isn't much here that I want. Um, I, I mean, I've been through here all yesterday and today. Um, there are a few things that I still look for for myself. Um, I come here. Oops, flip around. Um, I come here, number one, to um, get more people to know about the tool collecting organizations and what's around here. Um, and um, I, occasionally, I will buy things that need to be restored and are on the, the cheaper side to then give away to new woodworkers. But there are a few things that I actually need. And every now and then I find something that'd be like, oh, this would make a really cool video, um, and I'll buy it for that. But rarely do I buy things for my own use. Um, and there's not much that I, that I particularly collect, so. Uh, love those owners, machine's chest. And usually I'll, I'll do an early pass, uh, like yesterday, before I did the live, I did a pass through and if it looked and saw if there's anything that I wanted. Ooh, here's an early Stanley three. Is this your table? I'm gonna have to come back and take a look at that one because that might be one he wants. There's another three, 35 bucks, broken handle. Oh, that's a lakeside. But that one, this one has a really early uh, Stanley logo on it. I like that one. Whole bunch of cabinet scrapers. Auger bit sets. 45 bucks for that set. This one's nice. This one's got everything. 75 bucks. 45. Let's see what we got over here. Number fours. Number twos, one of these days I want to get a decent two. The two I have doesn't work because uh, it was soldered together improperly. Ooh, here's a low angle. The, uh, these um, got very expensive. What is this one? Oh, Sergeant, even more expensive. Those are hard to find. A um, whole lot of people really want the low angles, but back in the day, companies did not make many low angles because they weren't wanted as much then. They are basically just used for butcher box refinishing. And uh, so very few of them on the market and the price has gone up. There's a weird low angle plane. Oh yeah, this is the, uh, the 97. Um, it's a chisel plane, so there's no mouth in front as long as you get right up into a corner. Um, the sides have to be cut out here so you can actually reach the adjuster. Okay, here's a couple 55s. Our, that one's a 45. That one's a 45. This one's a 55. 
So 500 bucks, but it's a 55 in the box. Here's another 55, a newer one in the box for 400. There's another 45. Another 45. Uh, saw vices, squares. I don't know this. Oh, did you buy it? Yeah. <laughs> Are you still alive? Yeah, live right now. And yeah, we got a. Uh, <laughs> this is a, a miter trimmer, shooting board, huge beast. That's pretty. Have you ever used a Craftsman low angle block plane? Um, I've never particularly used a Craftsman low angle block plane, but uh, the the older Craftsman are really good stuff. So and I, I put them in the same box as a Stanley for a lot of what they do. Is that case Some and contact, box parts, <laughs> irons and <Thank> cutters. <laughs> Wrenches and parts. Here's some more. 40 with the cutters. What's the price on that? $100 with the cutters. Here is uh, with cutters, another $100. If they don't come in a the box. Then individuals. That's this one. No cutters on this one. 100 but that's an earlier one. Is it? Yeah, this one's got the earlier Stanley slant on it. An unsquare, or a miter square. Brace and bit. Machinist's level. A Victor compass plane. Cabinet scrapers. There's another 97 with that uh, chisel plane. It's a cute little toolbox. And then we come over here. Rods and rules. Parking gauges. These Wisconsin shows seem to be quite a bit larger than the shows. Uh, well, Wisconsin, this one is actually a little bit smaller um, than the average national meets. Uh, the next national meet is going to be in Kentucky. Um, but yeah, I just saw it coming. I had to. To. Okay, yeah. Um, but the national the, the national meets are larger than anything else in the world. Um, the local meets are probably closer to what you have, uh, where you have you know like two of these rows. Uh, look at all these infills. Infill shoulder planes. Oh. Dilly, those are worth more than a lot of things that I own. <laughs> Ooh. Is that a Norris? No, that was not a Norris. Infill smoothers. Block planes. Cabinet scrapers. Oh, this one's interesting. This one is a, uh, a rabbit plane. It's a uh, jackrabbit. Um, number 10. And so I saw this on there and thought, ooh, it would be a great shooting board uh, plane. But with the jack, it, with, the, with the rabbit inside, it would not make a good shooting board plane. Um, so someone just wanted to be able to hold it a different way. So they made this little thing that locks onto the side. Uh, kind of interesting. Very cool. Ooh, another uh, uh, 62. Actually, I think that's the only Stanley 62 I've seen here. Greetings from Brazil. Yeah, I would love to make it up there. I want to do more of these meets and show off some of the more local ones and see if we can get more people coming out to them. So the more people we get, the bigger they get. Oh, uh, here, here we go, spoke shaves. A couple of uh, Miller Falls cigar spoke shaves. This one is my all-time favorite. This is the one I use more than anything else. It's got a round bottom here, but I can flip this around and put the flat bottom on there. Uh, so it'll do both. And it's so small that you can get into really tight corners with that. Cabinet scrapers, hags tooth. Yeah, I didn't see as many router planes in here today. Um, uh, Thursday, there were a lot of router planes outside. Do you find that you ever really adjust to the months on adjust? Do you find that you ever really adjust the mouth on an adjustable mouth block plane after you? 
Um, yes, if I'm doing detail work, I will close the mouth down. Or if I'm doing um, rough grain or I have to go against the grain, I'll close the mouth down on my, uh, my, my block plane. Um, but most of the time I keep the block fairly wide open, the mouth fairly wide open. I'm gonna show you that when we get over there, that's kind of cool. Okay, let's move on over to this one. We're eh, about 40% of the way through the sale. 90 bucks for the set. <laughs> Little wrenches. Here's a bunch of rules. Some more block, more uh, planes. Saw set. Shames. Yeah, uh, a few people have brought out different things, but it's it's usually the same items. Um, there are there are a few people who bring out extra things for Friday, um, but inside the big difference between Saturday and Friday is Saturday people are willing to deal a little bit more, um, but there is less selection as they've kind of been picked through a bit on Friday. Do you know a sale like this in Holland, Belgium? No, um, I don't know of much on there. If you go to handtoolfinder.com. I have a map of the entire world with every location I know of to buy hand tools. Um, but yeah, no, I don't know of one um, in Belgium off the top of my head, Holland. There's, there's not much there as most Europeans held on to all wooden body items and they just didn't last as long. Um, uh, mainland Europeans didn't switch over to metal bodies as much. Couple of compass planes, couple of sixes and sevens, block planes. So, 78, 130 for the seven. Those are a little more collectors. Well, this one's a little earlier. Some transitionals, lots of moldings planes, pencil sharpeners. Say hi, Alex. <laughs> Alex and I have been hanging out a lot. You'll know him from the uh, the hive mind. And so brushes, good bench brushes. Good bench brushes are hard to find. There's another corner brace, some egg beaters and breast drills, auger bit sets, files. We'll file that away and move on to the next table. What you got there, Alex? <laughs> you never know what you're going to find. Oh, this one's cool. This is a marking gauge. So you never have enough marking gauges. But this one has uh, four different pins on it. So you can set up four different marking gauges at once. Don't know how well that would work, but it's kind of fun. A couple uh, Japanese full saws. These are, you know, what are these? It's, he's saying he found one and thought it was just one made off. And then he found another one. So trying to figure out why all those slots on the backs of hippies. Oh, this machinist level is really, really cool. I love this one. That is absolutely beautiful. It is, it's huge. Yeah, let's see. We got a collection of levels and other things. Here. Yeah, I do. Pocket knives and levels and some other stuff over here. I'm coming around this side. 75 and 60 bucks. Some mini planes. Those are cute. I got a Vaporist if I need it. I'll take care of it. I know. Who else? I do. Some folding draw knives. One of these days I want to get a, a decent folding draw knife. I don't need it, but I want it. Record shoulder plane. Here's a couple threes. What is this one? Fulton. 18 bucks. There's a uh, grooving planes. Oh, these are, these are tongue and groove planes. So you have one side has the tongue and one side has the groove. Or I guess this is the tongue and that's the groove. Kind of a 
a nifty design. Some uh, Veritas router planes. More Veritas router planes. Hammers and handles. Oof, I was happy to finally get one of these. They're harder to find. But you clamp that on the side of the plane and it allows you to set an angle. It's hard to hide on a 78. There's not much. It's basically just a, uh, a fence you can adjust for a regular bench plane. I don't use it much, but it's fun to have. It's the chisel plane model. And those collectible pins, levels. What's the maker of those tongue and groove planes? Uh, I don't remember who made these particular ones. What are they? St uh, Sergeant. See anything else? Well, that's what I'm looking for. I've been looking for a plane sergeant. This one just looks so, back over here. This is a early Yankee. I like that one. Oops, sorry, down. Seeing lots of spoke shaves. The one you said you liked. What do those? Yeah, those are usually around like eighty bucks. Um, the one he had here was forty dollars, but it was missing the blade on it. I mean, you could make a blade for it. Um, but those are usually pretty expensive because a lot of people like them. So here's a compass plane. That'd make a good user. Doesn't have a price on it. That would clean up nicely. Block planes. He has sold a lot here. He had two whole rows earlier of hand planes. So there's a whole bunch missing here, a whole bunch missing there, and then that whole back row was full of hand planes. But uh, he has a lot that are uh, more for users. So they're in like the $30, $40 range for good users. Uh, but they're like Shel Shelton's and, and Bedrock's and later Stanley's and Craftsman when they made square. good points. But then you get up here to the... Uh, Stanley number seven, 120. Let's see, this is, is this the Craftsman 45? Yeah, that's the, the Craftsman version of it. It's kind of fun. <laughs> Shoulder plane, Sp uh, uh, a spoke pointer, uh, cone cutter. Another 45. 45. There's a uh, homemade core box plane. That's pretty. Okay, let's see what we got over here. Oh, uh, these are fun. Big old spoke shapes. These are Cooper's spoke shapes for trimming up the tops of barrels and such. So you're collecting. Do you really need a seven or eight? Um, well, if you're, if you're regularly doing large stock, uh, a seven or eight are fantastic. Um, they just save you a lot of time. But do you need one for most woodworking? Generally, no. Um, but if you find yourself doing a lot of like four foot long stock, then they are very, very useful. I'm sorry. All right, I wanna show you guys this. This is a compass plane, uh, but it is wooden. And this would be incredibly difficult because you have to have the bed angle coming down in here. So all of these pieces adjust up and down so you can loosen the screw on this side and then slide them to whatever radius you want and then tighten it back up. Uh, they all have the, uh, the keys in here. This is just really, really cool. I want to make one of those, but uh, it has a very interesting story that came with it, which uh, I might uh, show off sometime. But yeah, I want, to, I want to make something like that. That one's been on my list for a while. He brings it to the meets and traps. <laughs> Knives, bits, other sundress items. You never know what you're gonna find. There's a slick Stanley 40, uh, Stanley 4, machete, saws. Those bow saws are cool. Uh, 50 bucks for auger bit set. Turning tools, round clamps. Here is an electric. Um, uh, double boiler for your uh, glues and such. Chisels, carving tools, gouges, hand clamps. 
Ah, violin clamps. These are kind of fun with the wooden screw. I don't know if you can see it, but they, they clamp in between those. Good for uh, mu musical instruments. You need a, a case for your Stanley 40 cutters. I'm gonna have to come back for that because the one I bought last night just didn't have the, uh, the box for it. I might make a box and, and create a label for it. Maybe I'll do something different. Interesting pliers. Oh, this is interesting, a uh, optometrist lens set that you can uh, use for uh, finding out what the uh, what the prescription is. From England. What's that? From England. From England, oh. Lots of fun things. Okay, uh, so here let me give you an idea of what we've done so far. So we went up and down the first table, up and down the second and the third, and then I've got two more tables. The back side of that one is really cool. Um, and then before we're done, I want to take you over here and show you the displays. Because one of the big reasons why I come to MWTCA is to learn things, and there are some fascinating things over there. Um, so I'm trying to get to that before they start wrapping it up. Lots of books. You can see old uh, um, catalogs and a lot of inf interesting information from people who are using it. Uh, used to write the books on it, and so you can read the historical methods for it. Uh, dividers. Then we've got, uh, oh, these are kind of interesting. Check out these patterns. So you got French curves and protractors. Well, that's kind of interesting. I might have to come back and look at that. Have you ever seen an old manual for a foot-driven dentist drill for sale? I have not seen one of those. That would be very cool, though. Let's see. You never know what you're going to find in the goodie bags. Well, we're digging through. <laughs> yeah, usually there's there's like guys that will come with buckets of like $5 items and $10 items and $15 items. Um, and you get to dig through them. They're a lot of fun, but most of those have already sold out. Old grist mills. If you become a member of the MWTCA, you get a grist mill quarterly, which has a bunch of really cool uh, information about uh, tool, tool collecting, um, as well as a reprint of an old manual or a book. Um, that comes every year. Uh, there's several other things you get with your membership. Oops, sorry, I missed the comment there. I've been looking for one for ages. Oh, yeah, I don't know. If I ever see one, I'll let you know. So we got uh, rules and levels, wrenches and pliers and dividers and other good things. I mean, it's, it's tables like this, you can come back through and look through five times, and you'll see different things every time you come. Block planes. Really nice old screwdrivers. Fun square. Oh, let's come on over here. Hey. Okay. So, what we got over here? A little of this, a little bit. Oh, I love this thing. The uh, the Veritas, um, uh, what do they call it? It's the, uh, the, 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 the oops, sorry, angle down. Come on, show it. 25 bucks. I don't know what it is. But you can set it up and, and have different angles for different, um, how many dimensions you want for, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? How many sides you want? You know, 12 sides, nine sides, six sides, five sides. It's kind of a, a fun little device. Yeah, yeah, those bins are always fun. So 25 bucks for the MWTCA membership gets you quite a bit, as well as you then get invited to all of the, uh, the tool sales because the tool sales are just for members. You have to be a member to get into these. Um, and they don't advertise it. They just tell um, members about it. Oh, check this out. These are um, wagon jacks. Oh, well, that one's a wagon jack. This one is a uh, miter trimmer, so uh, a miter clamp. So this uh, mouse down here is at 45 degrees. But these are kind of cool for uh, replacing wagon wheels. There's a good old trabisher. Having fun today? <laughs> I feel you. I feel you. Some rules. 
Yeah, here's another core box plane. One of these days I'll get one of those. A few saws, a couple big gold joiners. Now, if you don't do a lot of joinery, or you don't do a lot of joining and you need a longer one, you can get these older ones for almost nothing, you know, 35 bucks. And uh, you probably come down on that even. So you can do long stuff if you don't have a big Stanley number seven, Stanley number eight, those wooden ones work phenomenally. As long as they're flat and true, which you can adjust them. So let's see what we got over here. Some more good user planes. Here's a four and a half. 120. That's really similar to my four and a half. Stanley 55. Another Cooper's ads. Uh, here you go, perfect handle screwdrivers. What do we got up here? If I'm going too fast or missing something, feel free to uh, chime in and say, hey, can you go back and take a look at that? So here's some more uh, spoke shapes. This one is a the, uh, the, the um, convex and concave. This one is a, scra as a scratch stock. So you can put that profile in there so they can get the focus. You can set the fin fence a certain distance away and it becomes like a, uh, a, a scraper. And so you can scrape out your, your shapes. Great for delicate things or needing to go around curves. Some interesting uh, marking gauges. Gouges. Here's a Bedrock 608, 160, 170, or 608. There's a 40, don't come across those very often. 125, the price on those has gone up big time in the last five years. Lots of people suddenly want the old scrub planes. Not really sure why, but hey. <laughs> what do we got down here? I love these parts bays. You never quite know, you gotta spend some time looking through these and seeing what you find. It's really easy to gloss over different things. Oh, this is kind of interesting. This is actually an ice skate sharpening system. So you'd stick the ice skates in here with the blade up, and you'd have them side by side, and you could put your file on top and ride on both of them and clean them both out flat and true. Oh, so kind of interesting. Here's a bunch of blades. A lot of uh, 45, 55 blades in there, also five bucks a piece, five bucks a piece. Specialty ones are 10 bucks a piece. Molding plane irons. Ooh, excuse me. Some interesting fences. Another cam for a 45. Small books. Old oil stones. Some more. Uh, those are for 55s. Uh, they fit 45 or 55, but it's a 55 set. Axes, wrenches, motors, cowbell. Makes me want to go racing. <laughs> oh, what do we got here? Now that's, now that's an interesting little draw knife. That one's been sharpened a few times. And there's a beautiful double head king cutter. That was really nice. <laughs> Scraping plane. Victor Compass plane. Let's see what we got over here. On this side, got a couple plow planes. Yep. Oh, this one's really cool with the uh, the brass works. That's pretty. Tongue and groove plane. Thought about making a, a tongue and groove like that. The, uh, the blades go opposite directions. That'd be a fun video to make. Some Cooper's planes. Okay, what is this? It's a handle for something. It's a. It looks as though there was a blade here that they hooked on here and tensioned here, oh. and it was a. Uh, 
draw a knife, probably, with a removable blade. Huh. Probably user-made. Never seen it before, and obviously the blade yeah. is long, long lost. But I've never seen a manufacturer. Oh, I see the little notch on there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then here, they'd notch it here and then use this to tension the blade. Nifty. <laughs> I've never seen one uh, commercially made like that, but uh, so I think it's probably a Smith made thing. Yeah. Nifty, thank you. Cabinet scraper, little brace. There's a uh, corner adapter for your order, for your brace. Folding rules. Clamp and clamp. Holly gauge. Looks neat, like a little giant spoke shape. Yeah. Oh, my allergies been going bonkers on me. Good old wooden brace. All right, let's see what we got over here. What's that curved plane for? Oh, yeah, go back and show you. These are Cooper planes. Um, and so this, our Cooper is someone who made barrels. And this could actually ride on the top of the barrel and trim them all off flush and level. So it's rounded, so it can actually go around the rounded top of the barrel. Um, and these ones here, this will cut a groove inside the lip of the barrel. So after you've flattened it off with this one, then you can come in with this one, and you can cut a groove in the inside of the barrel a little ways distance, and that'll be a spot for the lid to house into. So this plate will run on the, the top of the barrel, and there'll be a knife that sticks out in to actually uh, to carve out the groove for the lid to go in. Uh, uh, Coopers make some really interesting things because they work with odd shapes. <laughs> so let's see what we got over here. Okay, this one's cool. These are hard to find, though. The, if you ever thought that a, uh, a corrugated bottom was weird, weird hey, how would you like to play with that? What is he asking on this one? Uh, $1,185. Which, yeah, they're collectible. It's not something you want to use. But uh, as with always, prices are valuable. Are variable. The only thing does not look... Uh, we are in Madison, Wisconsin. This is the MWTCA National Meet, and they hold it twice a year in different places around the U.S. If you'd like to find out more about it, um, you can go to MWTCA.com, or I have a link to uh, a whole bunch of other collecting organizations around the United States and the world um, on HandToolFinder.com. For... Yeah, HandToolFinder.com is a list of every known place I know to buy hand tools. It has a map of the entire world, um, as well as um, trusted online sellers. Uh, to Virginia? Oh, Virginia is like the hotspot for hand tools. Um, let's see. Uh, oops, there. The actually, the national... Oops, sorry, wrong way. Flip around. Wake up. There you go. Uh, the national next June is actually in Gettysburg. Um, so, yeah, depending upon where you are in Virginia. Uh, I'm hoping to be at that one. Uh, the one this fall is in uh, Kentucky, uh, uh, Greensboro, Greensboro, Kentucky. Um, and so they're, they're, yeah, all over the place. Uh, so go look at uh, handtoolfinder.com and you'll see a map of all of them around the world as well as stores that sell tools and antique stores that are known to sell hand tools. Um, and a lot of other things like that. Let's see. Let's get back to this. Oh, this one's interesting. All right. So we've got bevel gauges and a level and a saw. Yeah, I can understand the bevel gauges. Double bevel gauges. That's kind of cool. Double bevel gauges and level. Yeah, I could kind of understand that. But then you throw a saw into it. I'm, that one's kind of interesting. Oakland, California. Oakland, California. Do you know why they would mix those together? <laughs> Here's another number one. Yay, number ones. There aren't that many number ones here today. I think I only saw three of them. One of them sold. There were uh, two for 1000 that one for 1200 And one of them sold for 950 bucks the other day. Let's see what we got over here. Stanley's. Oh, this is a really cool turning saw. That pretty with the the type of maple. Mm -hmm. 
the, uh, the joiner gauge. That is a beautiful brace. That is very, very beautiful. The Stanley 46, Type 4. Wow, you don't come across those very often. Winchester, they didn't just make guns, they also made planes. There's another 97. What's that? I don't know. Have you been through the uh, displays already? Yeah, well, I'm going to take them through that since I'm done with these. Because um, if you got George Wanamaker, the tape measure guy, to talk about his tape display, that would be... That would be a good one. I'll look, see if I can look him up for it. Do you know who he is? Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. No, not to Thank you for the idea. Uh, let me go back. Sorry, I saw a question here. Uh, what was the price on that joinery gauge? Uh, 175 bucks. But with the box, you don't see that. I, actually, I think I've only seen the box one other time. Um, I paid, uh, I want to say I paid 90 bucks for mine, and it was in really bad shape um, without the box. So. Oh, that's pretty. Is that Ohio? Yeah, Ohio Tools. Number 99. Hi from London. Hey, how's it going? If you guys see anything you want me to take a look at or want to know the price on, let me know. Here's a Winchester four and a half. Don't come across those very often. 175. Miller Falls, four and a half, 150. Do you have any thoughts on Siegley planes? I have an older set, 80 joint plane, that I got from a guy whose father was. They are actually, um, they're good. They're, they're, um, yeah, they're. As with anything, it depends on which which version because they they changed over time, but they are very good. Here's some more Cooper's planes for running around the inside of the the mouth. India normally. I read a story one time. How many tons of buffalo are in India? Yeah, there. Uh, you know, there's a, uh, a German plane. That's a toothing plane. There was a guy here on Thursday who had a whole bunch of German planes. Which was really then. Stanley 45s um, are pretty average price here. Um, at the auction last night, I actually bought a 45 with 20 some blades, and I spent 41 bucks on it. Um, that that actually forty two fifty, um, but that was an incredibly cheap sale. Most of the time, a forty five with one cutter is about forty to fifty bucks. And that curved draw knife also inside barrels. Yeah, yeah. Oops, sorry. Yeah. That one way over there. Now. Sorry, trying to get around a few people here. Some braces, compass plane. If you get one with the box and everything, you're probably looking around 120, 140 bucks for a 45 with everything. Yeah, here's a uh, 45 with one cutter. Uh, he has 55 on that. And everything today is negotiable because it's the last day of the sale. There's only gonna be going on for another hour or so. 80 bucks for an Irwin set, all the augers, really nice condition, 80 bucks. Uh, yeah, here's a 55. Ooh, that's a pretty 55. With all the cutters, so this is going to be an arm and leg. My guess is uh, 350 to 425. All, all this shiny 475. stuff I got from him. Yeah. Those, uh, uh, and as again, Saturday, everything is negotiable. Sticker prices don't mean too much. <laughs> Some more saws. Ooh, this table. Let's see. Is this table? Yep, this table is and definitely is on the level. Candy. Free candy for anyone who wants it. What a beast. Oh, and these. Oh, my word. Okay. So here we've got collectible plow planes. Ooh, let the drooling begin. And these, these are, you know, 5500 So that's $6,000, $2,000. And yes, that is a going price on them. That's not like overinflated. But uh, you don't make things with these. You just collect them. Those are, those are pretty. <laughs> uh, let's see what we got over here. Here's a big set of pig stickers. Uh, 
Yeah, this is a carving set. Um, he's asking uh, 450, but these are just interesting. They're um, user-made and very, very fascinating with these uh, uh, nuts as ferals. It's just kind of an interesting idea to use a nut as a ferrule. I mean, it worked great. And of course, matching mallets if the uh, the handles match. It's kind of weird. I like Coca-Cola. That is. That just one. Less than a grand, it's a steal. <laughs> yeah, there's the other number one. <laughs> Here we got pile irons. Look for. If you're missing that iron. Here you go. More bench planes. Let's come around this side. Got a table of books and other historical information and items. Never know what book you're looking for. One of the reasons why I love coming to these is there's just so many things to learn. If you're looking for specific information, you'll find it here. Not just from books, but from people who collect them. Hey, fun, huh? Yeah. I'm trying to get every bedrock family made. Okay. Wow. Let's see. Got this. Check out this beast. Uh, w four and a half. Give you an idea of its size. I have fairly um, large hands. Oh, but I got. This thing's got to be what, 30 down. inches long. Wow. Wooden body uh, with a metal top on it. That thing's got to be uh, fun to push. I'm almost there. Oh, yeah. Still don't know what this thing is. What is that? <laughs> There's a few things here. I keep waiting for the owner to come through so I can ask him. Plane. Is that what they use to flatten the enemy headquarters? Yeah, yeah. That's the Fabrics and crochets. There is a full auxiliary unit to the uh, MWTCA. Don't get my wife started on that. <laughs> here are some rope makers. Sock darners. There's some. Uh, this is an apple um, apple peeler. Yeah, sock darners. You put these inside of a sock, and they allow you to, to sit, stitch up the hole in the toe. Why does that panel saw have a hole in it? That uh, reduces friction on it. Um, uh, at least the idea was that it reduced friction. Whether or not it actually did, who knows? Some historical collectible items. Uh, some really interesting pencil sharpeners. Bells and whistles. Yeah, maybe I'll have to skip through this because there's quite a few people in front of it. A lot of very interesting things on this table. So what is that? What is that for? Uh, being able to figure it out. Not a whole lot of tools, but. Uh, lot of fun history in there so corn cleaners so corn shuckers those are kind of interesting those are also corn shuckers so this is a surveyor's chair it's basically a big tape measure <laughs> <laughs> here's some uh, brace hand uh, bit handles Corrugated bottom end. Yeah, uh, it's the hole in the saw. In most good saws, and here it is up here. Most good saws uh, would actually be tapered so that the back of the saw was thinner than the front of the saw. But uh, yeah, yeah. There's a couple years ago. There was a, a full um, collector that just collected uh, um, pencil sharpeners. He had the display. It was really kind of cool. Yeah, here's a big um, crown molding plane. That is a big beast. Let's see, some more molding planes. Interesting wrenches. Another hag's tooth. A couple bed rocks. Really nice uh, braces. Some more wrenches. And here's a, uh, a full set of uh, um, Jennings bits. 125. There was someone who sold a set of Jennings bits, full set, gorgeous set, one of the cleanest I've ever seen, for 65 bucks on Thursday. Looks like a Japanese plane. Where? Oh, no, that's actually um, a Western uh, molding plane. You get the handle in the back. 
very, very wide, but it's a, a molding plane for, for crown molding, so it has that big wavy sole for crown molding. What's the price on that brass brace? Oh man, these, I don't even want to look at them. They, they, yeah, these are always expensive, huge collectible pieces. 350. 95. Oh, this one's out of um, ivory, uh, ebony. This one is 95. That's actually not bad. One of these days, one of these days I'll buy one. How much for that Stanley number seven? I don't know if we're seeing a Stanley seven here. Um, there have been a few of them. Depending upon the condition and collectability, anywhere from 80 bucks to 170. Here's a few transitionals. Is this, is this the one from last night? Yeah, hey, using no. a bench plane. I thought of crocodile. There's a few uh, box planes. This is a <laughs> yeah. yeah, collectors spend a lot more money. But the nice thing about collectors is that they'll get rid of the cheap stuff for cheap. Um, and then collectors eventually pass away and their wives sell off their tools for what they were told they paid for them. And here's a fun couple fun buckets. They uh, five dollars each. Saw sets and saw sets and saw sets and saw sets. Hollow augers, hollow augers, saw sets, scrapers, more saw sets, squares, saw sets, cross cut saw sets, wire strippers, five bucks a piece. Oh, this is, this is, I want one of these. All right, this is the original E. Gibbs jointer uh, for cross cut saws. These you do not come across very often. Um, these are, are, are very, very expensive. What's he asking on this one? Uh, 350. It's actually a little bit less than I was expecting. Um, but you can see, yeah, those are 350. Whereas you can get these in functional condition for five bucks. There's one of those in there. Um, do basically the same thing. This one just does it a little better. And there's less of them. He was a plain one. Boxed tools, books, Oh, here we go. This is a saw set. Big, big saw set. This table has a bunch of this. This is a saw set. What is that one that looks like a clamp? Um, I don't know. Because then I, maybe you're talking about this. This is a uh, miter box. So this cuts. 45 degree miters. Micrometer. Black with miners. I don't know what you're saying. Sorry, I don't know what you're saying. So yeah, here's another saw set. Uh, this. This is a saw set, an automatic saw set. So as you crank it, it advanced the hammer type saw sets. Some more <laughs> jointers, more saw sets. Hollow augers, spoke pointers, cone cutters. Yeah, sorry, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, here's that one we were looking at for you know, 350. This is one that someone decided to make. They took the regular, um, regular uh, uh, setter and they soldered or they uh, brazed this on. So homemade, 60 bucks. Here's the exact same thing, homemade. Um, 48 bucks. A little different from the, uh, the $300 itchy. Yeah, here's a square. That will keep you square. True. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah, I'll take you over a minute. There's a display of saw sets that are kind of cool. Oh, these, these pipe clamps. I haven't seen these before. These are dual pipe clamps. So you can put a crazy amount of force on this thing. Uh, so they're just like a regular pipe clamp except for they have two pipes per clamp. Um, kind of interesting. This is um, a uh, leather stitching vise. And so it's, it's spring-loaded, so it's always squeezed and closed. And you can use this cam down here to open it up. So as the cam comes down, the jaws then open up, you can put your work into it, and then bring it back down to clamp onto your work. 
kind of interesting. A couple uh, uh, rabbit planes, other items. A little uh, cone cutter, spoke planer in there. There was an electric automatic saw set. Yeah, someone bought that just before I got a chance to shoot a video of it. Really wanted to show off that thing on Thursday. Those things disappear almost instantly. A few more little bits and pieces. Okay, so that is the, the tool sale, but I want to take you over here and show you the, uh, the displays because some of this is just incredibly fascinating. And I've got to hurry because a few people are packing up already. Um, but these are all set up to, to talk about the history of specific tools. Um, or a collection of tools, or a maker of tools. So like this was talking through um, the uh, the Victor planes. Oh, I gotta get over here before he packs this up. I waited too long. These are incredible. So these are old iron um, European axes. And yes, these were intended to be used. There were a few that were ceremonial like this, um, but these up here were used axes. Can you imagine having the, the craftsmanship to make that and sell it as just a simple axe to be used? <laughs> really, really beautiful. Uh, yeah, this is, um, these are bandsaw uh, swagers, so um, sharpeners. Um, so they file off the back of the tooth. So they're a jointer and a sharper to, to sharpen large bandsaws. I mean, to give you an idea, this bandsaw blade is um, about 10 inches. Actually, it's probably about 11 inches because the points at the bottom are cut. Um, so these are all designed for sharpening these, which are kind of <laughs> fascinating. Um, and a display on levels. Now, here's a display on uh, a wheelwright's tools. So the people who used to make wagon wheels uh, actually, the, the this guy who he had um, at the last tool meet, he had a set of executioner's axes. These are actually um, woodworking axes, um, but yeah, he was uh, he had a whole set of actual executioner axes that uh, carried out executions. Yeah, these are gorgeous. These are hand planes. So just like those axes, there were people who put their heart and soul into hand planes. And some of them dated 1746. This one's kind of cool with this this spot on here. So you can actually, that's where your hand would push. So it wraps around there. The, the little intricate detail carving on this, where the shavings would come out because the, the mouth here is, is closed up, but the shavings would just eject out through here. Just beautiful. This one with a, a face that looks back at you as you're planing. And uh, yeah, the, the tote is down here rather than being up vertical. So you would hold it, and so your bench would be a little bit lower. And you can see how some of these eventually started getting their handles up higher at a different angle. This one, look at the carving on this. It's a mermaid. This is a, a tongue and groove plane. So one side is the tongue, and one side is the groove you know, for flooring. That's really, really cool. Wagon rights tools. So like these are the patterns to make the fellows. Uh, the fellows were the wooden piece that would go from here to here. So they'd have a pattern so that they could make them all the same to go all the way around. This is a hub reamer. Uh, lots of fascinating things. Oh, check out this. Handmade scraping plane. Cabinet scraper with all the adjustability. Look at that maple. That is just gorgeous. Uh, let's see, what do we got over here? Oh yeah, here's the one I was talking about earlier with the, the saw sets. Uh, so everything on this is a saw set. So from the basic, simple things like this, all the way along, to the little more advanced, and then hammer type saw sets. Yeah, they, I know they look like uh, um, telegraph items. Now these are the, uh, the automated ones, crank the handle and run it. Like, uh, this long one here, I love that. So that was. Oh yeah, it was probably a it was probably a saw set that you were you were looking at earlier. Um, either that or a uh, a clockmaker's punch. Um, those are are fairly similar as well. 
just a lot of interesting things. And every one of these has information about the maker, when it was made, and uh, things of that nature. Then uh, long rules. Um, these are absolutely incredible. Uh, just beautiful. Some of these are, you know, like this one. This is a ruler, a, like a, a tape measure. Um, so you've got this wrap that's going around here. I don't remember if he says how long it is, but with the wooden made, that's just cool. So let's see, what's the other one? There's one more over here I want to show you. Oh, yeah, um, hand-powered grinders. Um, all different types and makes. Um, some of them, very fascinating to see the gearing ratio on these. Oh, look, there's a clock. Um, but where was the one that you hit a, a foot part? Oh, yeah, here it is. Displaying all the parts of this foot power grinder. And, you know, we, we rag on people using power tools to sharpen their irons. But what is he doing? He's sharpening an iron on a foot power grinder. <laughs> Imagine the life on that tape measure. Yeah. How many things has that laid out? Okay. Uh, let's see, what else do I have in here? Oh, okay, I gotta get around and show this. These are incredible. So here's the, uh, the design. But here's the reality. Yeah. Isn't that cool? That is just yeah, fascinating. And there's actually um, a guy selling one of those that listed for $1,200. Those are, are seriously collectible. So that is the MWTCA National Meet in Milwaukee 2021. Um, if anyone has any last minute questions, go ahead and throw them in and I'll uh, see what I can get here. Uh, computer power tool. I plan on making one soon. Yeah, I, I won't be able to make it to the national in October because um, it scheduled differently. We have another event coming up, but I'm hoping to make it to the one next June. And I'll be at a bunch of the locals as well. Um, I'm also really hoping um, to be at the best in the West, uh, which is very similar to slightly smaller, not by much. Um, but it only happens every two years out in either Washington or Oregon. Um, and so I'm hoping to be out that. That, I believe, is in August. Um, but if you go to um, Pacific Northwest Tool Collectors, you can find out more about that one. Uh, sorry, missing up on this. Do, does it ever worry you guys that all it would take is one? Yeah, to buy up all the tools. <laughs> Uh, the thing is, there are just there are so many thousands and thousands and thousands of more tools here. And I'm talking to some of these guys who make their living on selling tools, and every week they go out to someone who passed away and clean out their tool supplies and then sell them all again. Um, there are a crazy amount of stock. What you have here is not even a drop in a bucket of tools available. Uh, yeah, and if you want to, on the second channel, I have the uh, um, Thursday's meet as well as going through here yesterday before things were picked out. So, yeah, so um, I think that will about do it. Sorry, reading through the comments is a little more difficult on here. Um, but I'm hoping to see you at one of the meets. Also, if you want to see more information about this, MWTCA is the large tool collecting organization, um, and it covers most all of the United States as well as they have a, a few meets in other countries from time to time. Um, but there are tool collecting organizations other places like Canada and Australia and the West Coast and California and down south and East Coast. Um, and if you want to see a list of all of that, um, go to handtoolfinder.com. And I have all those listed out as well as every known place I know of to buy hand tools in the world. So let me see. Any last comments? Oh, if you're in New England, that is the hot spot to buy hand tools, bar none. Um, yeah, go look at my website, um, handtoolfinder.com. And uh, there, there are lots of locations in New England. Uh, that is the best place to buy hand tools in the world. Um, there's more there than anywhere. Uh, 
Uh, prices may be a little bit more than the Midwest, but the selection is far greater. Yeah, thanks for everyone who gave a thumbs up. That means a lot. Uh, screwdriver with the stainless steel. West Virginia, hi. Argentina. Do they have any router planes cheap? Um, there weren't many router planes here today, um, but on Thursday there were a lot of router planes, and those went from anywhere from 60 bucks for one that needs a little bit of work with one cutter up to uh, 140 that would come with a full set. You know, 200 bucks would get you one with a new in the box. Yeah, but talk to Alex. He he was stealing things. I don't know how he got some of the prices he got. But, uh, yeah. So uh, I think that will about do it for today. Uh, oops, oh, no, sorry. There's more comments here. I thought I was down at the bottom. Uh, I just got... Oh, you just got on? Well, you can have to go back and watch it. Or uh, in the second channel, I have walkthroughs of Thursdays as well as doing this. Um, yesterday before everything came through, everything was picked through. Where is the best place to find information on identifying tools? It depends on the tool. There's different websites for everything. Um, yeah, there, there isn't a one great place for it. Um, you'll have individual collectors who collect a specific type of tool who will create a website for that specific type of tool. Um, but if you want to find out, um, if you want to find out where to find those, usually the best place are the, um, the collecting groups. Um, such as this, or there's a couple groups on Facebook, um, or you can get onto the Wood by Right Hive Mind and post things on there, and we'll try and help you out with that. Yeah, yeah, that's the way it goes. So I think that'll do it for now. Um, so until next time, have a wonderful day.